Hi, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you about reclaiming clay. I'm a big fan of taking clay out of the ground, cleaning it, filtering it, and processing it, drying it, and using it because it's 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 a whole different concept of being able to take your own clay, you've processed it or you've made it, and throwing pottery from truly something you've literally taken from the ground. There's a few different steps, and everybody does it a few different ways, but the basic concept is all the same. In this bucket, now this is not the clay I'm going to show you, but this is a, another local clay. This is a little bit lower fire. What I've done is basically just taken it out of the ground and dried it. Okay, let it just sit outside. You know, this stuff is curing for, you know, I've had this stuff for probably four or five months at least. Now what I'll do is I'll take it, I'll break it up, and pulverize it, basically to a, a size about this big. Now, you want to do that because it makes the, the later steps a little bit easier because hydrating stuff this size and uh, filtering it is a little bit easier than leaving it big chunks because what this will do is this will just stay a big chunk and become a big clod in, inside the water and never really break down to something nice. You literally have to go in there and break it by hand and it just gets thick, I mean, makes it really thick and just a little problem. So you'd want to crush it down and, and make sure it's dried I know it sounds kind of funny, before you try to hydrate it. Now, some of the things you'll need, or I highly recommend, is a run-of-the-mill strainer. Something you can get out of the, you know, Walmart, um, their, uh, the, the kitchen section. Makes it really easy. You don't, don't need to spend too much money. If you notice the mesh on it, not all that fine, but it, this does a trick. This helps really get your larger items, your aggregate and things like that, to your twigs out of, out of the clay once you first strain it. Okay, and then I recommend you know a nice power drill, something to plug in. That way the battery doesn't die for as long as you're going to use it. With a nice twirler bit on it, just really to help mix it up. I also recommend I've got this bamboo cane. I'm a big fan of bamboo, so I have a bunch of it, and I use this as a big stir stick, really. Okay, um, a bucket and usually another little container. Um, here's uh, here's some of the stuff. Here's some of that uh, the clay I'm going to be showing you in a wet form, in a clay form before it's been processed. Kind of chunky, not really consistent. Okay. Now, also another good handy tool is one of these tubes. Just basically half inch tubing that you can siphon water off. Now, process number one, after you've crushed it, after you've crushed it, you want to start hydrating. And I usually leave it in a bucket full of water, uh, probably about three times as much water than what you will need in the uh, at the very end. And the reason why is because you want to overhydrate it and dilute it down quite a bit, so it's a really s um, brothy consistency. And the reason why you do that is because it makes it easier to strain and get that aggregate out of the clay. Now, after that stage, and here we know a few different stage buckets. This is really the this is the unfiltered, unfiltered clay. Now, this is about a week old within this bucket. I've stirred it every day, and I've filtered some of it out of it. You can see the clay line actually all the way up to the top. Now, all this is a nice consistency. There's no large clumps in here. Um, it's just starting to settle, and we can see the water. This is uh, about 24 hours worth of settling within that water right there. Okay? And this bucket, let's show you. I, I run through it. And notice I get a little clumpy stuff. Now that's clay, little bits of dirt in it, and granules. Okay. Now let me clean my hand off a little bit. That way I don't take any sediment to the next level. Okay. Now stage two is really this one right there. I've used that strainer to get to this level. That's it. Okay. Now in this, I put my hand through it. Okay. So you notice a lot, a lot cleaner. Not a lot of stuff to it. Just kind of comes off. Now remember, this is overhydrated, more water than which what, what, what you'll need. Okay? Just makes it straining, filter, and, and getting a finer material. Okay? Now this, I then use, I use a 30 mesh on a bucket strainer. Okay? With this strainer, I take it over here. Now I've got it at a higher level, and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay? Now, putting my hand through this stuff, a lot finer. Notice there's no little clumpy items on there. Okay? There's a few different levels of consistency as we go to the bottom of the bucket. Okay. Now, the reason why I have it up here is because what I'll do is I'll take this little hose that I use right there and I'll drop it down to that bucket and just strain off and siphon that excess water. And actually I'll take that water and put it in that bucket. That way I don't have to keep using the same water and I'll throw it out and just recycling stuff. And actually that's pretty good stuff. Um, depending on what you have in your soil, 
I mean, that's basically filtered drinking water. I wouldn't really drink it though. Now, as we notice in here, it's actually clay all the way to the top. This is 24 hours of filtering, okay? The nice clean water is actually right there all the way up to the top. And then we have a clay line. Now, depending on where you get your clay, you may actually have another layer on the bottom. And you wouldn't want to use the very very bottom stuff because what that is, the extra sediment, that's not clay. It weighs a little bit more than it. And you want to siphon that stuff off. I've taken fluid from this bucket, used just a little scooping bucket right there, poured it through this strainer, okay? And what I do is take the strainer out and you see all that stuff right there, okay? Now, that's all the stuff that's in the clay. Little bits of quartz, little bits of flint, um, plant matter, uh, organic matter. Uh, I'm sure there's little fossils in here from because where it comes out of little, micro, little tiny ones. Now, what what you do, instead of just taking this out and dumping it, you notice, if I do this a little bit, no, it's not the best to do this on camera. Look, all the moisture came out, and look what I have. I have something that's just flying around, just rolling around, you know, rolls around the bucket really easy. You know what all that is? That's clay holding it together. Well, if I just throw it in the yard, I'm losing clay. So what you want to do is just rotate in here. And doing this, you're just diluting it down. Now the slop I have in here is pretty thick, but it'll take that, take that, and notice it's smaller now. And just keep doing it. Just keep doing it in here. What you do is just dilute that clay body down with all the little rocks. Okay. Now it's getting well. It doesn't look like it, but it is. It's getting smaller. And just keep doing it. Now it's a little harder because this stuff is pretty thick. And just keep doing it. Notice? Half the size. Okay? And the more you do that, the harder it is for this clay body, or this little ball, to stay together. Okay? I want, to, I want to start breaking it up, and eventually, it, there won't be any clay left to hold it together, and it just kind of is there. Notice now it's not having a hard time holding itself together. Most of the clay is gone. See what I'm left with. Harder to stay together. Now, if I did a little bit longer, that ball would mix out, and I'd just be left with a bunch of stuff that looks like that. But you get the idea. One of the things I, I need to mention is after. Sorry, mosquitoes are killer out here. It's just just rain. Mosquitoes are really bad where I lived after it rains, and they're eating me alive. One of the things after letting that clay and water separate after you cycle it off. A lot of people like to take that wet consistency clay and put it in plaster bats or put it on plaster forms. What the plaster does is it helps draw the moisture away from the clay and it does it a little bit faster because what happens is the, the water evaporates out of the plaster faster because it's pulling it away from the clay and uh, it cuts your process down. You can also take that and set it out in the sun and it does it even in a faster process. I'm not too worried about time. Um, usually I just let it sit in the buckets and uh, it does thicken up for me and it ages really nice at the same time. Now typically you do not want to use this clay right after you process it, okay? Because the amount of plasticity it has is really at the lowest point at that time, a natural clay. A clay needs to age. Now you can cheat the system. If you add a little bit of distilled vinegar to your clay mixture and mix that in, it helps give a the sense of aging to it. If you have some old clay of that same type, you can mix that old clay into it as well, and it helps age the process a little sooner. Okay, so it's been about a month since the, uh, the last parts of the clip that I filmed um, where I was mixing up the clay, straining it, uh, letting the water... Um, kind of race to the surface and separating and draining that off. And 
some of the things that I've found that helps the clay uh, for showing is to make it age. Uh, you need the uh, a plastic quality about it so it, uh, it doesn't break and it, it, uh, it works and it's a little more malleable. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that artificially is adding vinegar to your clay body. And it's an, it's an old trick. Um, I learned it when I was in, uh, in college making tons of clay. And this earthenware, the clay that I dug up, uh, it's actually uh, South Texas clay, it's caliche. Uh, what I've found that I like to do is let it set. Uh, don't put it in the plaster bats for quite some time and let it naturally stiffen up itself. Now, it takes a bit longer. Like I said, it's been about a month uh, and it's just getting to a, uh, to a, sl a sludge-like consistency. And so what I'll do is, as we see in, in this, I mean, in these buckets, just mix it up. I always do about five gallons, makes it the easiest. And it comes up to about uh, about a third of a bucket of clay once it's uh, dry up. Now we notice this one's a little bit more dry, but I take it in there. You know, it's really creamy, really milky, okay? All right, I'll get that off my hand. Clean, clean that up. Here's another bucket, a little lighter slurry. Okay, and actually, here's a uh, another one in the process. This is actually a uh, local to the um, to Vider, actually southeast Texas. It's a little higher fire. Now that clay body surface, we're walking over here, natural, natural. This is what it is. Okay, this is literally dug straight out of the ground. Put into a uh, a fire, actually, and we notice it's a nice red surface. See if this can focus in. I can't really focus in too much, but you see, solid, but quite a bit of impurities. Now the next stage of this, really at this stage, is when I'm going to just put it in plaster bats, and I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos of that, and really just dry it out a little bit more. Okay. Also, the stage, if you take a bunch of a bunch of this stuff, lay it out on a flat surface, kind of thin, let it dry really in the sun, and pulverize it, make it to a nice powder form, and then do a uh, a quick fire. Um, you don't no warming time, just basically put it uh, in a kiln. Uh, all pulverized in a bowl or whatnot. Take it to about cone 04, which is this is about an 06 clay body. This earthenware is a lot lower fire, and add that fired clay back into this. And that's actually how you make grog. You know, kaolin, um, things of that, things of that sort. Is just clay that's been fired and add back to, to clay. Um, what it does is it helps secure the clay body, less less chance of cracking, and it makes it a little little stronger. Um, now you can if you don't have the time to wait um, obviously add a little bit more vinegar but what you can also add to the slurry that you've mixed up is uh, fiber take a, a pinches of, of, of broke down nylon uh, shredded you know it's really really fine and mix that in the surface and what it, what it will do is act as a uh, just a, a, as a strengthener to, to the body and help from separating, pulling, cracking, uh, and make it a little easier to throw or work with. Now, obviously, if you're slab building or working like that and you're working with a really, really fine surface, you want to be careful to how much you add to it. Never add too much to it. Uh, I pre thanks for watching this clip. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send me an email or write some comments below. Thanks again.